The quiet town of Mill Creek had seen it all, or so he thought. Over the years, patients came and went with various ailments, each one a unique puzzle. But none haunted him more than the strange case of Mr. William Prescott, a man in his late fifties who was slowly being consumed by an affliction Dr. Harris had never fully understood, neurogenic bladder. It began like any other visit. Mr. Prescott shuffled into the office, his face pale and drawn, dark circles under his eyes as if he hadn't slept in weeks. His chart revealed a long history of urinary issues, but the latest notes showed something more sinister. I can't sleep, Doc, William said, his voice shaky. Every time I close my eyes, it's like, like there's water inside me, but it won't come out. It just, waits. Dr. Harris frowned. You're having trouble urinating? It's not just that. It's like my bladder is holding something. Not just urine, but something, alive. At first, Dr. Harris dismissed it as a symptom of Mr. Prescott's neurogenic bladder. It was common for patients with this condition to feel disconnected from their own bodies, to feel like their bladder was betraying them. But as Mr. Prescott described the feeling, an eerie, sloshing sensation in his abdomen that kept him awake at night, Dr. Harris felt a chill creep up his spine. He ran the usual tests, bladder scans, urinalysis, even a cystoscopy. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. The bladder was partially full, but not dangerously so. No infections, no blockages. Yet the patient's anxiety only worsened. Their whispers, William said during a follow-up visit. His eyes had grown wild, darting around the room like something unseen was lurking in the shadows. Every night, I hear them, from inside me. Little voices, begging to be let out. Dr. Harris tried to reassure him, explaining how nerves in the bladder could send confusing signals to the brain, making it seem like something was wrong when it wasn't. But that night, he found himself thinking of Mr. Prescott's words long after leaving the clinic. As the days went by, the story grew darker. Mr. Prescott's condition deteriorated rapidly. His belly began to swell, though he insisted he hadn't been eating much. No medication seemed to help. He stopped coming to his appointments, and Dr. Harris feared the worst. One evening, unable to shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong, Dr. Harris drove to Mr. Prescott's house. The air felt thick as he approached, a storm brewing overhead. The windows of the old house were dark, and the door creaked open with a soft push. Inside, the stench hit him first, a pungent, sickly odor like stagnant water. He followed it upstairs to the bathroom, where the door was slightly ajar. The sound of dripping water echoed faintly. With a deep breath, Dr. Harris pushed the door open. There, lying in the tub, was William Prescott. His body was unnaturally bloated, his skin a pale, grayish blue. His abdomen was grotesquely swollen, like a waterlogged corpse. But what horrified Dr. Harris most was the steady stream of water flowing from William's mouth, dark, brackish water, as if the man had drowned from the inside out. A faint gurgling noise filled the room, and Dr. Harris turned toward the source. The toilet was overflowing, its bowl filled not with water, but with something thick and viscous. As the liquid spilled over the edge, he saw faces, distorted, screaming faces, rising and sinking beneath the surface. Suddenly, the gurgling turned into a whisper, faint but unmistakable. Let us out. Dr. Harris stumbled back, his heart racing. He fled the house, unable to comprehend what he had just seen. The next day, authorities found Mr. Prescott's body and declared the cause of death as unknown, though the records would later describe it as a rare complication of neurogenic bladder. Dr. Harris knew better. Something had been growing inside William Prescott, a darkness that no scan or test could detect. And every night since, Dr. Harris can hear it. A faint sloshing sound, like water waiting, waiting to be released. 